Spain, night of October 24th, Molotov cocktails were thrown into the house of the Ukrainian journalist who was investigating the underground business of President Zelensky's entourage. The next day, a known subject set fire to his apartment in Kiev. Who gave the order to intimidate a journalist? Police are involved in logistics. This is the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine. The main distribution channels are the armed forces of Ukraine and schools. This is Mirab Lamsadze, a criminal authority, a thief in law, owner of a logistics company. He claims that he transported drugs on behalf of associates of the Ukrainian president in a minivan disguised as a decorative beams. And he even personally met with Zelensky. Is the president of Ukraine really involved into criminal business? Oh God, I see Zelensky himself. According to information from the Ukrainian drug force, the drug market in Ukraine reached record levels last year. It's $178 million. How's the drug cartel in the Zelezhna called Himprom organized? Who covers it? What profit does it bring to the Kiev authorities? After Maidan happened, the Ukrainian side considers the drug business as another weapon against Russia. The man who's sitting with his back to us is a member of a group so-called black transplantologists, hunters for human organs. He admits that he spent several weeks in the Ukrainian front lines in field hospitals. They worked 24-7 and tirelessly. Sometimes there were not even enough containers for the removed organs. I remember that in early February, in one day, we sent 23 pairs of kidneys, spleens and livers to the base. How is the market of black transplantology organized in Nezaleznaya? How much do the hearts and kidneys of Ukrainians cost? Why do soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine practically not have the right to a proper burial? How does the Kyiv authorities legislatively cover the organ resale business? I'll tell you that from Ivana Frankivsk to Kharkiv, the dead are already being buried in city squares and parks. This Ukrainian Verkhovna Rada deputy is named Geo Leris. A former ally of Zelensky and the servant of the People Party presents documents directly proving the theft of Western aid by Zelensky himself and his closest circle. Specific amounts are indicated – around $200 million. They are draining the less drops from our country with one hand, while pretending to be white and fluffy patriots of our country. American journalist and Pulitzer Prize winner Seymour Hersh publicly accused the team of the Ukrainian president of embezzling funds allocated by the US Congress to purchase diesel fuel for the Ukrainian Armed Forces armored vehicles. His source from the Central Intelligence Agency estimated the amount stolen just last year at $400 million. According to Seymour Hersh's investigation, the Kiev leadership even profits from toilet paper. The corruption there is simply incredible. They sign contracts, for example, for the supply of toilet paper, and then buy it from intermediaries to make money on the side. Former Ukrainian Verkhovna Rada deputy Ilya Kiva is convinced that Zelensky's secret bank account registered in Costa Rica is regularly topped up with tranches ranging from 12 to 35 million dollars. Where does the president get such money? Everyone at their level should be interested in their enrichment so that they don't lose interest in participating in crime, you know? Someone stands on the lookout, someone sits behind the wheel, and someone cracks the safe. How does Zelensky's business empire work? What shadow projects bring the highest income? These are decideds, usual decideds who for a certain share are ready to solve certain issues with the government. Who's the inner circle of the president of Nezaleznaya? And how did the participants of the KVN team turn from comedians into dollar billionaires in just a few years? A team of young and hungry people who got bold from the opportunities that became available to them. How foreign transplantologists end up on the front lines? We have repeatedly found exploded premises, usually of a basement type, where you can see the remains of human bodies. 
And how did a female Ukrainian fashion designer become the chief coordinator of the Ukraine's largest drug cartel? All competitors were eliminated, and to this day there is a direct monopoly of one cartel in prom. On what funds did the president of Nezalezhnaya buy himself a villa in Miami, apartments in London and Madrid, and also a castle on the Red Sea shore? Where does he get such money, considering that according to the declaration he is far from being a billionaire? Who is behind Zelensky's black fund? Exclusive footage, secret documents and revelations from participants in the criminal business. Watch right now, only on RAND TV. These are exclusive shots captured by our filming crew in the Moscow region. Russian operatives are busting one of the underground laboratories producing synthetic drugs funded by the Ukrainian drug cartel called Himprom. Interaction with curators from Nezalezhnaya was minimized, employees received instructions and money remotely, no one had direct contact with the leadership. Alexei Prihochko was one of those who worked at one of the many enterprises. Dmitry the liaison communicated with him exclusively through messengers. Alexei sent short video reports to the curator about each stage of the production of banned substances. These were short videos, 20-30 seconds, sometimes a bit longer, so that I had an idea what's happening right now to control the whole process. According to Alexei, one such laboratory is capable of producing 20 kilograms of narcotic powder monthly. Prihotko and his two accomplices were paid 1,400,000 rubles for their work, calculated at 70,000 rubles per kilogram. Of course, the profits for the clients were significantly higher. Alexei calculated how much money his Ukrainian curators were pocketing. Dmitry could earn around 10 million rubles for just one batch, from which he gives us about 1.5 million rubles. Roughly speaking, it's a salary plus expenses for buying everything else. So he gives away 3 million and receives 7. Over the past year, Russian FSB operatives confiscated 370 kilograms of synthetic drugs produced by Ukrainian drug cartels for sale in Russia. The entire traffic was under the direct control of the SBU. The drug business is very widespread, and this was facilitated by the strong corruption of law enforcement structures. Currently, after Maidan happened, the Ukrainian side considers the drug business as another weapon against Russia. This is all also supervised by the security service of Ukraine. They seem to just earn money from it, but justify it with good intentions, such as undermining the Russian Federation in this way. Who among Zelensky's friends is covering up the drug business in the country? And how are government officials, members of parliament, drug barons and thieves-in-law connected in this story? This is the black transplantologist. He has more than 10 trips to the front line on his record. He treats human organs as commodities. The most valuable heart's kidney sliver, for which they pay the most on the black market, from 5,000 euros each. He had at least 20 fighters for one shift, each paid separately. I was paid a bonus of $170 for a wounded soldier or a fresh corpse from which organs were removed. All organs were taken from the dying, even eyes, skin and bones. Everything was sent abroad. I don't know how much the families of these poor victims were paid or if they were paid at all. In 7-10 minutes, I had to cut out a couple of kidneys from a wounded or burned soldier and pack them in a special container. Bodies without organs were packed in black bags. Our attached group of fighters was called. We loaded them into truck towards Artomovsk, where we had prepared and dug the land for burial. No real record was kept. 
Mobile hospitals and crematoriums are positioned near the runways for quick transportation. Such objects are carefully guarded by special services. Black transplantologists typically work in groups, each with its own tasks. There is a group of transplantologists, a group that finds clients, a group that finds victims, a group of doctors who remove organs, a cleanup group. We have repeatedly found exploded premises, usually of a basement type, where we saw the remains of human bodies and remnants of medical equipment. The cleanup group doesn't always manage to clean up their deeds completely and leaves, but they receive huge amounts of money. And undoubtedly, these bloody funds go to Zelensky's account under some respectable name. A Ukrainian army serviceman who defected to Russia in August this year also confirmed to our filming crew that foreign surgeons regularly visit the front line. He witnessed it while lying in a filled hospital in Zaporizhia. Some foreign medical workers would come and transfer heavy servicemen somewhere to cut out their organs. Black transplantologists from Switzerland, Israel and France naturally profit from this together with the government. These images were posted online by a resident of Mykolaiv. The man was in line for bone marrow donation for a child. He accidentally discovered that there was an underground organ resale in the local hospital. Here's a fragment of his conversation with the chief doctor, who openly states the prices and quality of the material he receives from the front lines. He complains that organs often lose their condition during prolonged transportation. When the soldiers of the armed forces of Ukraine go to the front, no one informs them that, in fact, they don't have the right to normal burial. This is directly related to transplantology because, as they say, nobody, no problem. The practice was worked out since Serbian times, that is, since the times of war on the territory of the former Yugoslavia, and became the subject of investigation by the Swiss Commission under request of PACE, headed by Dick Merdy, the head of the UN department who suffered terrible and indescribable attacks after completing his work. In particular, a case reached the Hague Tribunal when the heart was cut out of a Serbian soldier while he was alive, breaking two ribs to extract the organ from the chest right on the bench. Organs can be freely bought in the territory of Nizalezhne both offline and on special online platforms today. The American news portal SOTT conducted a global study of the black organ transplant market and found that organ hunters from around the world earn about $2 billion a month on the territory of Ukraine. The business is so specific that it's simply impossible without the patronage of the Kiev authorities. A similar business, I mean black transplantology, is a direct prerogative of the president because it requires coordination from a logistics point of view and the conjugation of the activities of various ministries at the highest level. And how else? If there is a place where people die and part with life, it means organs appear. This process can be accelerated, it can be taken under control, it can be stopped. But the question is, what for? It brings in money. Everything that brings in money in Ukraine today is used, because in this case this territory is colonized, and the people are in a state of genocide. Vasily Prozorov worked undercover in the security service of Ukraine for a long time. According to his information, even before the start of Russian special operation, President Zelensky's friends advised an effective scheme for embezzling funds from the supply of military equipment. They decided to start by upgrading the entire fleet of tanks and armored vehicles. Their military equipment was either captured or burned by the militia. The army needed to be replenished with military equipment. What did they come up with? Through dummy companies they began purchasing Soviet models of military equipment that were in Eastern Europe, in Poland and in Czech Republic. They bought them in the Czech Republic for 26,000 euros per combat vehicle. This is actually the price of scrap metal. And they brought them to Ukraine, bringing the hull and the turret separately. 
They were brought to the Jatamar armored plant, where the turret was placed in the hall. Communication systems were installed, painted, and the Ministry of Defense bought the infantry fighting vehicle for $205,000. In other words, they sold it nine times more expensive than they bought it. But the scheme went into full swing after February 2022. Deputy Gail Leras, as Zelensky's former associate, disclosed documents confirming embezzlement during Ukraine's procurement of weapons for the needs of the armed forces at the very beginning of the special operation. Pay attention to two positions – ammunition for the Grad multiple launch rocket systems and artillery shells for 122mm caliber Soviet-style howitzers. Several suppliers are listed in the documents, but the Progress company received the most lucrative orders and had the highest prices. Now let's see who oversees this company. Zelensky's right hand and the head of the presidential office, Andriy Yermak. The so-called kickbacks intended for the president's entourage are not hard to calculate. The profit from this contract alone amounted to 110 million euros. Here's another example. In March-April 2022, the Ministry of Defense bought 122mm shells with four different contracts. And again, the largest volume of shells, 50,000 pieces, was purchased from the Progress State Enterprise at a cost two or three times higher than, for example, from the Spets Techno Export State Enterprise. They additionally pocketed 33 million euros. They took 33 million euros from your pocket and put them into their own pockets. Here's the circle of people closest to President Zelensky. We already know Andriy Yermak, the steadfast head of the President's office, the chief advisor. He has been on the team since 2011, from the days of working at the 95th Quarter Studio. It was founded by the former members of the KVN, led by Zelensky. Over the years, friends have gone from creating entertainment shows to government officials. Former SBU employee Vasily Prezorov is convinced that today it's not Zelensky, but Yermak who's ruling the country. He's the Grey Cardinal, and I think this person truly holds the strings of all major criminal spheres in Ukraine. For example, in the gas sector, coal trade, privatization, tax sphere, VAT refund, agricultural productivity. Everywhere Yermak has his people overseeing these businesses, and everywhere he has his share. President Zelensky most likely is financed directly through him. Coming up next, the dramatic dismissal of Ukraine's Minister of Defense Reznikov. Why didn't colleagues forgive him for supplying chicken eggs to the army at inflated prices? Where and how does it leave after resigning? Also, exclusive revelations from a drug courier. Where did they meet with Zelensky and, most importantly, why? He told me, no one should know about this, no one. You know, right? How do drugs get from Ukraine to Russia? Watch right now, only on RAM TV. This member of Zelensky's team represents the interests of the Kiev elite and the Verkhovna Rada. David Arahamia, leader of the Servant of the People presidential faction. A former DJ and IT industry representative, he distinguished himself as the head of the Ukrainian delegation at the beginning of the Russian special operation. Now he controls military supplies and financial inflows from the Western partners. Most likely Arahamia is Zelensky's right-hand man. Naturally, he acts only with Zelensky's knowledge and does what's allowed. Naturally, Zelensky has a share in these processes. A share specifically from the kickbacks they get from selling weapons. He did this so that this weapon could be used in schemes he wouldn't implement with others. 
Donetsk hackers downloaded these secret documents from the computers of the office of the president of Nazaleznaya. There are reports of money transfers from the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID, totaling $15.5 billion. The recipients are Ukrainian trust funds. A month later, this agency initiated an audit of the spending of the transferred funds. Zelensky's associates were suspected of misusing the funds. You can listen to how they divide Western aid on this audio recording. On this recording, Nikolai Tyshenko, the godfather of the head of the president's office, Yermak, a people's deputy from Zelensky's Servant of the People Party, discusses with Nikolevsky, a colleague from the Rada, the scheme for sharing money allocated for environmental programs in the country. The deputy's plans – pocket $200 million, deposit it in a Swiss bank account, and flee the country. They want to take control of this ministry, manage the forests, oil and gas completely. It's enough to work for three months. Three months. And then they can quietly disappear into the forest, from here. I think 200. There won't even be enough. They use offshore accounts, and they need to find a good European bank that won't expose them. Mostly it's Switzerland. That's it. How do offshore accounts work? Usually some false contract is concluded, and financial transactions take place under this false contract. Naturally, there is no influx of goods from the other side. So it's money transfer to offshore accounts and money laundering. So that's the main purpose of offshore accounts. They are used to launder this money, because if they immediately redirect the money to some Western bank, the bank may question the origin of this money. This person manages money laundering schemes to offshore accounts. Sergei Shafir, a permanent assistant to Zelensky and a close friend since their KVN days. Director and founder of the 95th Quarter Studio. Zelensky transferred his share in the production studio to him just before the presidential campaign of 2019. Mr. Shafir was for a certain period the Grey Cardinal, a shadow contactor on behalf of Zelensky. He effectively interacted with many people with significant finances, satisfying specific wishes, demands, allowing the plundering of various segments of the Ukrainian economy. Shafir rarely gives interviews, cutting off communication with journalists. However, there are still some videos of his statements online. Here is a fragment from a live broadcast on one of the talk shows. I have a question for you as the main offshore friend of Mr. Zelensky. Have you not advised Mr. Zelensky to transfer this money to Ukrainian banks and pay taxes on them, as the president calls on all other citizens of Ukraine to do? We've answered these questions many times. The 95th Quarter Studio is one of the largest taxpayers in the media business. I have nothing more to comment on. The female journalist had a valid question for Shafir. Where does it get the money for two luxury apartments in central London? British reporters found property owned by the Ukrainian official through their own investigation. A three-bedroom apartment in an Edwardian mansion in Regent's Park for $1.8 million. Another apartment is located in the famous Baker Street across the Sherlock Holmes Museum for $2.2 million. These are very expensive places to leave. I mean the area near Westminster Palace. Boris Johnson doesn't live next door, but you can have a cup of tea together. In principle, people can afford to live here. Now the main source of income of all Zelensky's friends is NATO's weapon supplies. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, in one and a half years the Ukrainian armed forces received from Western allies about 562 artillery pieces, almost a hundred multiple rocket launchers, 783 tanks, over 8 million NATO automatic rifles, 5,000 anti-tank complexes, 4,000 armored vehicles, millions of shells, hundreds of millions of rounds. With such a flow of weaponry to Ukraine, why does Zelensky regularly complain about a shortage of guns and ammunition and keeps asking for more? We lack ammunition and air defense means. We have at least 20,000 tanks. Ukraine asked for only 1% of your tanks. 
In this photo, three people organized the Black Re export of NATO weapons from Ukraine to third countries. On the left is former sergeant of the Ukrainian Armed Forces Vladimir Koifman. On the right, former advisor to the Ukrainian Minister of Defense Denis Fanash. In the center is our main character, Mark Morales, the owner of the American company Global Ordnance. He is responsible for supplying weapons to Syrian terrorists who attempted to overthrow the head of state Bashar al-Assad. Morales also has strong connections with Al-Qaeda militants, an organization banned in Russia, and leaders of illegal armed groups in African and Middle Eastern countries. United States for illegal weapon sales uh, back in 2009, and yet uh, in 2015 uh, he got a, a billion dollar contract from the U.S. Pentagon to, uh, to move weapons for them. So uh, again, when he's got that kind of money, you know, he can pay off officials, pay off customs agents, uh, make connections, do uh, deals on the side. And uh, of course, you know, the CIA has long been in the business. Few military analysts were surprised when after the escalated conflict between Israel and Palestine, Ukrainian weapons surfaced among radical Islamist groups of the Hamas movement. The militants even publicly thanked the Kiev authorities for the supplies. We thank the Ukrainian authorities for selling us this weapon. We will use this weapon against our enemies. We will use it against Israel. They had the opportunity to sell this weapon to interested parties. In the East, you can always find a grey market and interested parties. In the world, they always pay good money for weapons. And if it's good weapons, they pay good money for it. That's why the main intelligence directorate immediately took control of this business. The main channels for selling weapons from Ukraine operated under the guise of a grain deal. Weapons were loaded into the holds of ships and covered with grain on top. The Kiev authorities used this scheme until July 18th, the last day of the food agreement. According to the independent research media group from Montreal, Canada Global Research's daily newsletter, Zelensky and his associates earned about $12 billion from reselling NATO weapons and ammunition. This is almost 15% of the total military aid to Ukraine that the US and the European Union provided over a year and a half. Typically, barrels of engine oil were hidden under grain and other food products. Naturally, machine oil barrels contain firearms, grenades and ammunition. This way, they combine deals between food and weapons. Death and food was considered a very good option for all links in this chain. After numerous journalistic investigations and corruption in the highest echelons of the Kiev authorities appeared in the global media, Zelensky and the company staged a demonstrative cleansing of the ranks. In early September, Zelensky publicly dismissed Defense Minister Reznikov. Officially, he resigned of his own accord. However, Ukrainian hackers from the Beruginia group suggested that the real reason was quite different. They found documents indicating that the supply of food to the Ukrainian army was at inflated prices. For example, chicken eggs for the Ukrainian armed forces were imported to the front lines at 17 rivnias each. And in retail, their maximum cost was 7 rivnias. This information was also confirmed by journalists from the British Guardian. Prices were inflated under the pretext that there was a war, that sowing areas and places of production, meat processing, egg production and so on were reduced and therefore people had to endure. Military supplies, starting from the First World War, are of course one of the most profitable types of business. Where's the thief Reznikov now? The retired Minister of Defense of Nezalezhne lives in can in a French villa worth $7 million, which he bought for his daughter. And this is despite the fact that, according to the declaration, the official income of the minister is much more modest. 960,000 rivnias per year, or about $26,000. If we compare his income with the amount of the purchase, Reznikov would save for it for almost 270 years. Reznikov, 
Reznikov is a typical example of modern Ukrainian bureaucracy. It doesn't start with Zelensky and it didn't even start with Poroshenko. It started earlier. This is the mentality of Ukraine. Take, take, take as much as you can while you're in the office. In Ukraine, corrupt individuals are not condemned. Instead, they are envied because they managed to do it. Control over the flow of money in the office of the president of Nezalezhne is led by the chief of the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov. Under his leadership are the most lucrative channels of enrichment, namely coal centers whose employees daily attack Russian citizens with coals and drug trafficking, for which a whole enterprise Himprom was created in Nezalezhne. The owner of the drug cartel is Igor Burkin. According to the Ukrainian passport, he is Levchenko. He is pictured off the Mexican coast of the Caribbean Sea on this yacht Sunseeker Predator, worth more than $3 million. In Mexico, the 34-year-old mobster is hiding from Russian and Ukrainian law enforcement agencies, which have declared him wanted. In Russia, Burkin sold synthetic substances disguised as bath salts and fish feed. In 2014, he was arrested for creating a criminal organization, but at the court's decision he was released on bail. He continued to develop his business in neighboring Ukraine under the patronage of Kyiv security forces. Here he unfolded completely. He recruited hundreds of drug couriers and expedited, established the sale of banned substances through websites, chatbots and popular instant messengers, and created the largest network of laboratories for the production of synthetic drugs in the CIS. The manners in these underground workshops were extremely harsh. Employees could be bitten, caught, or even have their fingers cut off for any violation of the rules of secrecy, unauthorized contacts, or the use of mobile phones at work. In these pictures, a man with shot knees. The drug cook violated the production technology and was severely punished by direct order of Ukrainian curators. Even the guards were afraid for their lives. Why am I afraid for my life and health of my relatives and loved ones? Because the curator repeatedly showed me photos and videos of how people are abducted. They punish those who somehow expose their activities or who disagreed with their rules and orders. Actually, it was very scary. In March 2019, a couple of months before Zelensky came to power, an attempt was made to overthrow the drug lord Burkin. The Prosecutor General's Office of Ukraine initiated a large-scale special operation unexpectedly for Burkin. It closed 15 offices of Himprom, arrested three dozen members of the group and seized tons of drugs, weapons and explosives. But Burkin managed to escape again. And after million-dollar donations to the Ukrainian army and nationalist battalions, he resumed the operation of Himprom under the protection of the SBU. Now Burkin remotely manages the drug cartel from Cancun, Mexico. Zelensky's team is covering for a drug baron through their man, People's Deputy of the Rada, Nikolai Tyshenko. Here is a fragment of his conversations with a Burkin's representative. The People's Deputy mentions the price for assistance, denoting the sum of $1 million in rubles. The punishment in Ukraine for drug business is not as serious as in Russia, for example. In Russia, for drug smuggling on especially large scale, you can get a life sentence, from 20 years and so on. In Ukraine, it's a maximum of 12 years. So, if you go by yourself and have 1.5 grams of heroin, you'll get 8 to 12 years. And if you have an organized group that creates several laboratories, a chain of distributors and so on, you'll still get 8 to 12 years. This photo is from a fashion show by Ukrainian designer and model Karina Koinish. She's also a suspect in a criminal case involving participation in the Himprom drug cartel. After receiving a verdict and signing a non-travel agreement, she urgently moved to Kazakhstan, where she continues to coordinate the syndicate's activities. Karina uses fashion clothing sewing as a cover, not forgetting to mention the important role of the chemical industry in the production of modern fabrics whenever convenient.
If we look at Ukraine from a different perspective, we will see a drug factory, not a laboratory. Or a whole network where synthetic drugs are produced on an industrial scale. Watch next. Exclusive confessions of a criminal authority. How he transported drugs on the order of 95th quarter. He told me no one should know about this. No one. You know. How does the Kiev top deal with those who try to investigate the work of the Himprom drug cartel? Where does the Ukrainian president get a villa in Miami, apartments in London and Madrid, a castle in the Red Sea, and an account in a Costa Rican bank with a billion dollars? Zelensky's team sits in the places he had previously offered them and rolls into the hell in warm wagons, dragging the country with them. Watch right now, only on RAN TV. This is the criminal authority and the thief in law Mirablem Sadzi. He was detained in Russia on charges of theft. In Ukraine, he owned a company in Odessa engaged in freight transport. He transported everything from fruits and vegetables to construction materials. His circle of acquaintances ranged from Mamuka Mamushvili, the leader of the Georgian Legion militants, to Mikhail Saakashvili, the president of Georgia and the governor of the Odessa region. Many people used Mirablem Sadzi's services. He revealed how the drug transportation system is organized within Nezaleznaya because he was a participant himself. Once he delivered decorative beams and a minivan on the order of the 95th Quarter Company. He was immediately puzzled by the fact that he was not delivering the cargo to the final destination, but transferring it to another vehicle right on the highway. Not in a van or truck, but in a regular bus with the inscription 95th Quarter. This logo in the territory of Nezaleznaya is a guarantee of immunity. They are beyond suspicion, do you understand? 95th quarter is beyond suspicion. Bodlam Sadzi still decided to figure out what was going on and discovered that the beams were disguised containers for transporting drugs. I opened the beams and saw drugs there. Long beams. One and a half meters, two meters. Different, polished. In between these wooden beams are something laid out in packages. Drugs. When Lamsadzi realized that he got involved into an unpleasant story, he decided to cancel the contract. The clients then arranged a meeting for him in a very strange place, at the cemetery near Odessa. And then something happened to Lamsadzi that he couldn't expect. He had to speak directly with Zelensky. A large area entrance to the cemetery, flowers were sold there. A car approached, they told me, get out there. I got out of the car and, oh god, I see Zelensky. He told me, don't. No one should know about this, no one, you know that. No, you realize who stands behind my back. I was impressed, he spoke very clearly and quickly. He had such pupils and a cold look. And he gestured with his hands as if we were proving something. Do you understand me? We can judge from this video how the drug business has expanded in the territory of Nezaleznaya. In the center of the capital, synthetic drugs are freely sold disguised as a refreshing drink called Kratom. It looks like ordinary tea, but it contains a substance that induces hallucinations. In its effects, it's similar to the effect of opioids. We can observe a very interesting situation. This line is formed the Kratom drink, which is not very legal in its composition. Anyone trying to investigate the activities of Himprom Drug Syndicate in Ukraine and beyond falls into the blacklist of Kiev authorities. In these shots, the burning house of a Ukrainian journalist who exposed the entire chain of officials enriching themselves in the production and sale of synthetic drugs. 
the next day, unknown subjects also burned the journalist's apartment in Kiev. Are you talking about the respected Alexander Valentinovich? Great, I always treat him with respect. Which Alexander Valentinovich is being referred to? These are the negotiations of Igor Levchenko, whom the leadership of the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine awards with diplomas, and a subordinate who works in Europe. I assume that Alexander Valentinovich is Paklad, a general of the security service of Ukraine. He is covering for a member of the drug cartel working in Europe, and the head of the drug cartel shows him the utmost respect. Representatives of the Himprom drug cartel today are employees of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense. All these synthetic drugs are produced near Mykolaiv, near Kiev and near Dnepropetrovsk. These are not laboratories, these are factories of death. Ukraine today is a big concentration camp where chaos and lawlessness prevail. Where not only the law, but also morality is violated because a certain elite and those who control this chaos are enriching themselves. Ilya Kiva, former deputy of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine, calculated the amount Zelensky could have earned during his time in power. The sum is impressive – over $1.2 billion. If we compare this amount with the total volume of Western aid received by the Kyiv authorities since the beginning of the Russian special operation, which is $113 billion, it turns out that Zelensky's income constitutes 1.5% of it. The president's team has also earned well. Today they earn billions per month, not per year, but per month. And they have been very rich people for a long time. During his time in power, Zelensky's largest purchase, reflected in the history of transactions in a secret account in a Costa Rican bank, is a villa in Miami worth $34 million. And in these shots, a luxurious castle on the Red Sea coast. A huge house with a pool and garden in the most prestigious province of Egypt, next to Hollywood star Angelina Jolie's estate. Its cost is 150 million Egyptian pounds, almost $5 million. Secret documents specifying the property owner were provided by Egyptian journalist Mohammed Al Alavi. The owner is called Olga Kiyashko. This is the mother in law of the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky. On May 16, 2023, she signed a contract to purchase a villa in the Red Sea Governorate in Elgona. In addition to the Egyptian villa, the family's real estate list includes a villa in Italy, 10 hotel rooms in Georgia, 4 apartments in Kiev, and a house with an area of 353 square meters in the outskirts of the Ukrainian capital. None of them intends to stay in Ukraine. Each of them has long-established protection systems. Passports, real estate and guarantees provided by NATO countries. Britain has given guarantees to at least more than a half of the president's office and half of the security structures. And these are copies of checks totaling over a million dollars that a former female employee of the New York Cartier Salon posted online. The luxury boutique was visited by the president's wife of Nezalezhnaya during the Ukrainian delegation's visit to the last UN General Assembly. While Zelensky was begging for another financial tranche from overseas partners, Elena was buying jewelry at fabulous prices. She also behaved rudely to the seller. Well, Watch next. What did Elena Zelenska spend more than a million dollars on? Where did she get such money? What income is declared in the official declaration of the presidential couple? And why did the Kiev authorities prohibit disclosing their financial data immediately after the start of the special military operation? The mention of the Ukrainian ambassador to the United States, Markarova, was unexpectedly discovered in one of the most prestigious areas of Kiev. How did Zelensky rent out his Italian villa to Russians for $50,000? How did Europe react to this? He's telling the rest of the world not to deal with the Russians.
Watch right now, only on RAN TV. What did the wife of President Zelensky buy at the luxury Cartier boutique during shopping in New York? Here's the breakdown of the bill. A white gold bracelet with diamonds. Earrings. And a white gold necklace with onyx, emeralds and diamonds. Therefore, they have already lost both shame and conscience. And they know that their owners overseas or in London allow them to do this. The expenses and jewelry store by Yelena Zelenska don't align with the data from the declaration of her and her husband, the president of Ukraine's incomes. The amounts are in Rivnias. Zelensky's salary is 3,036,000 Rivnias. Income from property rental is 2.6 million. Royalties. Thus, author's royalties for acting are 4.6 million, and interest on deposits and bonds is another 442,000 Rivnias. The total profit for the year for Elena Zelenska is 953,000 Rivnias. If the joint family income of the presidential couple is converted into dollars, it's about $250,000. They won't have enough money for even the earrings at a New York salon. By the way, an important clarification. The latest publications of information about the incomes of the president of Nazalezhna are dated 2021. After the start of the Russian special operation, the Kiev authorities urgently introduced a law through the Verkhovna Rada prohibiting disclosure of data on the finances of officials. However, according to the schedule, Zelensky's salary has not changed drastically since then. Questions about where the president's family got $5 million for the Egyptian villa and a million for jewelry for his wife are not being asked in Nezalezhne. When we see people massively buying real estate from Egypt to USA to Florida, we roughly understand where the money comes from, given that the level of their income is well known. And if the head of the Ukrainian intelligence suddenly has an unregistered villa with a pool, or for example the Ukrainian ambassador to the USA, Makarova, unexpectedly discovers a mansion located in one of the most prestigious areas of Kiev, not far from Bankova Street, we roughly understand that a person can afford such a thing. And this is already black business. Reporters from the Italian publication Il Terreno conducted their own investigation. They were interested in the villa in the very center of the seaside town of Forte de Marmi, which belongs to Zelensky and which he rented out last year for 50,000 euros per month. Last summer, this property was rented by a Russian couple. Former host of the American TV channel Fox News, Clayton Morris, commented on this news in this video blog. He called the behavior of the president of Ukraine striking hypocrisy. Uh, there's jogging and cycling tracks, cozy restaurants, beautiful houses all around. The beaches of Forte de Marmi are recognized as some of the best in Italy. He's making money off of Russians. Well, he tells the rest of the world to not do business with Russians. Exactly. I just mm. love the hypocrisy. I'm just calling it out for the hypocrisy that side is of it. In these photos, we see luxury real estate in the Russian Crimea that recently belonged to the Zelensky spouses, but was nationalized and put up for auction by the decision of the local parliament. The apartment in Yalta's Livadia in the penthouse of a residential complex with an area of 119.5 square meters and access to the rooftop pool. The declared cost is 24,642,490 rubles. The property is in repair condition, and the previous owners, the Zelensky presidential couple, only managed to paint the walls white. 